Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hello, welcome back, everyone. So the holidays are fast approaching. It brings some angst and anxiety to some of us just thinking about, if you just think about the planning alone, then you think about the presents, then you think about family, friends, all of this coming to this chaotic situation for some of us, many of us now add, if you're a caregiver and you've got your focus on somebody that's in your care, a loved one, right? And now, now it's the holidays. You want to make them happy, everybody else happy. We are going to talk about preparing for the holidays. If you are a caregiver and she's been there, she's done it. She is somebody who coaches people, on this being a caregiver amazing and she's back with us marika humphreys is on the program how you doing today i am doing well i'm starting to get into the the holiday spirit a little more dressed just for the occasion today but love love the scarf gotta tell you love the scarf it's yes you know it's fun festive but not over the top yes well this was a gift for christmas last year for me actually so which is perfect. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. So I'm doing well. Mm. Well, I'm gratified that you're back with us. This is, uh, you know, we've talked about some challenging things that caregivers go through, but there's so many things involved with the holidays, logistics, emotions, anxiety, all of that. Even if you weren't a caregiver, now add that in, there's a lot going on there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, one of the first things I, I'd like to bring up, and I I have brought it up many times in this show, but it's always worth saying is just just the first tip I have for for caregivers, but really everybody during the holidays, um, is letting yourself be open to all the emotions. And I I really felt this a couple of years ago, uh, where it, it so happens that December um, was my late husband's birthday month. And mm. he was one of the unlucky people, <laughs> I will say, that had his birthday very close to Christmas. Um, but for me, that has always been a really challenging date because we just had a lot of good memories around his birthday time and Christmas. So I noticed for several years after um, he passed away that December was just extra hard. And I would kind of feel this heaviness that would come upon me um, during this time, this during this month, actually. And that is not uncommon if for those out there that have experienced grief and, and the loss of a loved one, that's that's pretty common to feel emotions around a significant date. And that date can be different for people. For me, it's his birthday. And um, the challenge was it was also you know, holiday month as well. So I was feeling this real wow. heaviness around a time where I, you know, nobody wants to feel that at any time, but in particular, you, you kind of have, we all have this um, desire to feel what we think the holidays, we should feel around the holidays, joyful and inspirited and, you know, focused on family and the fun traditions and whatever we are looking forward to. Like, I love, I love the holiday decorations. Um, I do love, I mean, that's just one of my favorite things. I love the lights that people put up and to have that heaviness sort of accompany me during that time. I really, um, I really had to come to terms with it. So that is the first thing I want to bring up is I think as caregivers, we have a lot of mixed emotions around the holidays. Sometimes it's, sometimes for some people, it's simply dread. Like they just don't even want it. They wish they could skip the holidays altogether, but it may be some sadness or melancholy for like past times, maybe when your loved Mm. one wasn't sick or ill or, or whatever is the current situation. Sometimes you're thinking, you know, is this the last year for them? So there can be a lot of mixed emotions and our natural response a lot of times is to want to push those away because it's the holidays. Like, I don't want to feel like this. It's not, you know, this, this sucks. It's not the time of year, but by doing that, we really don't do ourselves any favors and we, we don't allow that emotion to kind of go on, it's go on its way. So it's a, 
in fact, we usually, it, when we try to push it away, it, it will often stick around longer. So the first thing I really want to just say to everybody out there is just notice what you're feeling and just be open to it. And this is a whole, this is a time of year where, yeah, there's lots of mixed feelings and, and there may be even more if you're a caregiver. Hmm. How do you walk through the emotions? It's been said that the worst thing you can do is bury them and just kind of yeah. be robotic. And I'm not going to let it bother me. I'm not even going to think about that date or whatever it might yes. be. Yes. Yes. How do you do that? I, you know, one of the easiest things is just to acknowledge it, like what you're feeling in the moment. And I have a client who's who's practicing doing this right now. And I've, I've given her that assignment as, as my client, but, but she is just taking note throughout the day, like, oh, I'm feeling anxious, mm. you know, and then kind of writing, taking a minute to like write down a reason why. You don't have to go to that extent, but I think just noticing when that emotion comes up, like you feel sad, just telling yourself, Ooh, I'm feeling sad right now. And even thinking about why you might be feeling sad, what's on your mind, what are you thinking about? But the the space to like name, and probably an easier way to say that is to name your emotion when you're having it. Just by doing that, we spend a minute and we notice the the feeling we're having and that alone kind of um is really helpful because instead of just glossing by and going about our busy day we just give ourselves a minute of reflection and uh i think that's especially helpful to do during the holidays but it can and it doesn't always have to be the negative emotions it can be the positive emotions too you know hmm. uh, but just stopping to take notice it's it's like you know, the old saying, you know, stop and smell the roses. Well, stop and acknowledge your feelings. Oh, a hundred percent. And I would love to, if I may share something, because it's all in the, the wheelhouse of what we're talking about. And I'm going to share this and I'm looking at my phone to find it with uh, members of that men's group that I'm a part of. There's an app. Yeah. I don't know if you're aware of it. Maybe you mentioned it. I'm sorry if I missed it. Um, and it's totally free and it's all about emotions and it's called quite simply and and perfectly because it makes you know, total sense. The app is called How We Feel. And oh. you identify how you're feeling, what emotions you're feeling. And, and it's just bubbles. You know, I'm feeling sad, elated. And you just check them off at that moment. And then after a while, you can see a common thread that these emotions are coming up. Those are coming up. Then it gives you insight and how to express them, how to feel about them. It is totally free. And you could just download it on any of the uh, app uh, stores or platforms. Yeah. I'm going to check it out. Check it out. That is awesome. It's very graphical. So for me, like after a while, I don't want to read a lot of stuff. Like I dri it drives me crazy when I, I click something and I want to read uh, content somewhere and I just want the answer to something. And then you got to read yeah. this whole thing because I want to yes. see you see all the ads. This is very graphic and also free. You can make a donation yes. if you want, but I figured I'd share because it's exactly what we're we're yeah. talking about right now. Well, and just by doing that, I mean, that's a that's a perfect modern way of of just taking a moment to reflect, because in order to click something, you have to think about it for a half second and then make a decision. How am I feeling? And that is a very useful process. We don't, I think, do mm. that enough mm. in our on our modern day because we just we're busy. You know, totally. we, we have, we're busy and we have inputs coming at us all the time. And we have for people that don't have any built in reflection time, whether they journal or they meditate or they do something that is reflective, this is a, a good second kind of um, second mm. option. But you know, I also feel that we don't realize the benefits of acknowledging our emotions. We just say to ourselves, well, I'm kind of bummed out. I'm kind of sad. You know, holidays are coming up, whatever it is. And I'm not minimizing anything, but yeah. we just say, well, that's the way I'm feeling. But we don't confront it in our minds. And I recently started keeping a, just a journal and I write down what I'm feeling, what's going on. And I found when I first started doing it, it was you know longer. Now I find I get right to the point of how I'm feeling. And even in a, a relationship situation, where I need to make needed to make some decisions, um, I put up the, the pros and the cons. And when I looked yeah. at the pros and the cons, 
and it, the scale was like this and it wasn't in favor. <laughs> it, it was an eye opener. And I kind of yeah. knew, but I didn't know it was that much until you put it down on paper. Yes, old school paper, because writing makes such an impact on your mind. Yeah, yeah, I I like that as well, and I I think connecting what is either happening or what you're thinking about to that emotion it can be really helpful. And like you said, you saw patterns for yourself. I mean, that's ideally what really this leads to is you start seeing patterns, you start knowing yourself, and that's just one way of of knowing ourselves and. Again, coming bringing it back to the holidays, we often have a lot of expectations about how we should be feeling at this time of year. And I certainly did. Mm-hmm. Going back to my own story, I certainly did. I didn't want to feel down. I didn't want to feel heavy. I wanted to feel light and excited for the holidays. And I wasn't feeling that. And so then I was at conflict with myself, you know, and and then you're just, you're like even more emotions coming up. So um, sort of making peace with our emotions is, is the more you can do that, the more awareness you have around it, the more understanding, and then just letting it be. I mean, that is just the human, it's a human condition. When we feel sadness means we're also capable of feeling joy and love. And, you know, we don't often think about that, but emotions are are the opposites are what allow us to experience those. Mm. Um, when we numb our emotions, we tend to numb all of them. And, you know, if we like to just only get rid of the bad ones, but that's not, you know, that's not how it works. So when we feel the joy, we, we will often feel the opposite of that. And that's, that's fine. It's okay. What about those of us who feel we're supposed to feel a certain way. Like, yeah, you know, let's say, let's say somebody is um, in your care. They're not doing that well. Um, now the holidays are here. You got family yeah. and obligations and everything. All good. But you want to feel happy that the holidays are here, but you feel guilty that you're, Hey, everything's great. The holidays are here, but you're caring for somebody that maybe has limited time, if you will. And that, that yeah. balance in between the two, how do you navigate that? Yeah. I, You know, I am a big fan of authenticity. Mm. And what I mean is we often feel we need to put on a front for someone, um, for someone. where, And usually that front is the, or often feel that, I mean, we do that with other people in our lives as well. But when we're caring for someone, there's often this expectation to put on a front to sort of pretend something for them, to pretend to be strong, to pretend to be upbeat, to pretend to be positive. And I get that. I understand the desire for it. However, as humans, we are all much more insightful (laughs) than, you know, we pick up on people's energy and we, um, and also connection, like genuine connection with people comes when we reveal, when we show our true selves. And Mm. that requires being vulnerable and being open. And it does not mean laying all your burdens on someone's, you know, lap or dumping on them or just complaining and whining and moaning, but it can mean just sharing genuinely how you feel. And so if you are struggling, like, and you feel the need, I need to be strong, or they don't like to see me upset, or Mm. I don't want to upset them. But the trouble is, then it creates a a disconnect, because you're not really being honest, and then they don't be honest back, right? And then you kind of have this fake relationship together, where you're both pretending. And it's sort of silly, but we all do that, you know? I feel Um, too, if you're doing that, eventually, it's going to catch up to you, where you're going to just hide your feelings. You're not going to be truthful about them. And eventually it's, it's, it's going to take its toll on you. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I think the part we miss there is the opportunity to connect and in week. And I, and I think sometimes it's just simply having language around that. Like mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I just, I often will say, I'm just going to share or I just need to vent here or, you know, to be honest, like we can say, to be honest, that's, you know, this is a hard time or I'm struggling right now. And 
I'll be okay. Or, and please don't feel responsible for me or, and, you know, if you feel like you don't want to, you want to make sure that the, the other person doesn't feel like you're making it their problem, which is often what a lot of caregivers are worried about. Mm. Um, you can always add that, but yeah, I, I think being honest with people when we're struggling is how we let them in and they will be more inclined to do that in return because guess what? It works both ways. When we pretend they pretend, and then we're living, you know, having this pretend relationship where it's, uh, you know, holidays are also about connection and we have to be vulnerable often in order to connect, but, yeah. but it is hard. Authenticity is it's, it's hard in any situation. Yeah. Um, but it feels good when you're you, you know, when you, yeah. you're at that point where it's like, I'm being me, I'm being authentic. This is, this is yeah. the real me. Uh, you really had it, I feel, challenging given your your husband's birthday was around the holidays. Yeah. Lots going yeah. on there. A lot of emotions, yeah. a lot of emotions. Yeah. You, well, surprisingly, th- this one thing, when I recognized that that though that heavy feeling I was I was feeling was had to do with my my memories around his birthday and 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 the um once I recognized it and then the following year I was very aware and sort of ready for it. And now I don't feel that way at all. Mm. Partly because I'm just I just have awareness and I don't fight it. I just I let it be there. And I cannot tell I tell people this all the time, like you would be surprised how much when we fight our emotions, when we don't want to feel them, they will just hang out for longer. But the minute you, you like kind of just make your peace. And sometimes I say to myself, like, oh, this is just gonna, I'm just gonna feel sort of crappy today. And that's fine. I give myself a day even, or you can give yourself a couple hours, but the minute you stop wanting it to be different, it is amazing how quickly it will just, everything lightens. It's like our resistance to our feelings is what causes so much of our misery. And we don't think it's that way. We think we can push them away. But the minute we just open up and go, okay, that's where I'm at. And it mm. doesn't have to mean anything. You'll, you'll feel so much lighter. And, it, you know, it, yeah. So, um I, I think it's really like a secret. It's, it's like a little secret <laughs> that is sort of counterintuitive. So challenging question here to answer, I think. You get to the point where you, you're you comfortable in a situation with your emotions. Like you said, it doesn't bother you like it did. And you navigate yeah. through it. And this yeah. could be you know, after the fact of caregiving or during whatever it might be. How do you know that you truly are feeling okay with it? You moved, you, you moved forward. I don't want to say you moved on. You moved forward. Mm-hmm. But how do you know that you're not just burying the emotion? Does that make sense? Um, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's how, you f- <laughs> how you feel. Um, because when we bury things, they will come up. They will come back up. They don't stay mm. buried mm. for long. True. And they will often come up in unexpected ways. Um, and and I think also, I mean, you know, and, and we're talking a little bit now about grief because my husband passed away. But um, I, I think now, I mean, I still, it's been many years. It was, it's my, it's been six years now. And still I have moments of deep, deep sadness and loss, but because I am aware of them, I just, I'm very open to that. And I, sometimes I will sob and it lasts like all of about five minutes and then I go on. And I sometimes am amazed that, you know, that Mm. feeling even now can be so strong now. So but when you when we bury things and don't acknowledge, they will just kind of eat away at you. And I think you'll feel that uh, heaviness or it will impact your ability to have other relationships or, you know, it, it will find a way. I mean, sometimes people can, don't always see that, but I, I I wish I could give a more clear answer. Um, but I think that the difference is it's in how you feel um, and 
how we how we our perspective of those emotions, even when they come up, um, will also mean you've either buried it or have moved forward and with acceptance, right? I think one is one is denial and one is acceptance. I think that's maybe the difference there. Hmm. Acceptance. That's a really good word. Yeah. 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 And really just yeah. say, I'm accepting the situation. It still affects me. <laughs> not, yeah. You know, we're not, absolutely. But then there's yeah. also guilt that I'm sure comes into play where you might say to yourself, well, I should be feeling this or I should be feeling that. Maybe we just need to let that go and just realize that this is what I'm feeling. I'm being authentic yeah. with myself. Yeah. I, I I mean, one of the other things I think is um, really accepting that emotions, while we've given them labels, good emotions and bad emotions, but they're still just, they're just emotions. They're just function. They're a way of feeling because of how we're thinking. And when we have feelings of guilt, it's because we're thinking you know, I shouldn't do, I shouldn't have done this, or we're thinking something bad about ourselves. Right. So, but it, but it, the emotion in and of itself isn't a bad thing. It's just an emotion. And when you can get to that point, which is a truly freeing place, like all of our emotions, they don't feel the same, but they don't mean anything about us as humans. If we can, and then when we're able to let go of that value judgment, then you can get more curious and go, okay, why am I feeling this or what's going on here? Um, but yeah, guilt is just a way of, of letting you know that you're questioning your either past decision or behavior or whatever it is. And that's maybe, that's maybe spend some more time thinking about why do I feel guilty? You know? So if you can think of, we've talked about this before, but yeah, emotions as messengers, for something to pay attention to in your life is a better way, I think, to think about them as opposed to just, ooh, I don't want to feel this guilt. Let me just push it away, you know, yeah. kind of resisting the emotion. Mm. So. Uh, this is nobody else talks about this stuff. They yeah, just don't. Not a lot. Not, <laughs> not enough, not a lot. probably. Not, yes. a lot of pe- not a lot of people talk even about the emotions in general. Yeah. Now add it to a uh, situation with caregiving and whoa, you know, there's a lot, yeah. a lot going on there. Yeah. Um, yes. this is what you do. You help people out as our professional of the year, um, to reach out to you. The best way is just go to your website, go to my website. Yep. Coachmarika.com. Uh, and I've got a podcast on there as well. And, uh, you can set up a consultation with me and that is the best way to get in touch. Love it. Coach Marika, M A R I K A.com. I got to tell you, talk to lots of coaches, and there's all different types of coaches, many life coaches, et cetera. I've never spoken with somebody who does what you do and has the the empathy that you do to help people. And it's refreshing. It's amazing. And uh, you are all of that. And I appreciate you uh, with these uh, past number of podcasts talking about the stuff with them. Well, we dug into because nobody else talks about it. Yeah. Well, thank you, Steve, for that. And it has been a pleasure having the, having these conversations. I the hope same. they've been helpful for people out there. I know we have. I know we have. And uh, somewhere um, along the way, we'll, get a, we'll, we'll connect again. I'm sure there's going to be a time. All right. All sounds right. good. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Jason Derulo. I love that music connects to people all over the country, but unfortunately, so does something else. Childhood hunger. 15 million kids struggle with hunger right here in America. And yet, every year, billions of pounds of surplus food in the U.S. go to waste instead of going to the children in need. Feeding America is working to change this. The Feeding America nationwide network of food banks rescues this surplus of food to help provide meals to families in virtually every community in the United States, including yours. But they just can't do this alone. Join me in the fight against hunger in America. For more information on what you can do to get involved, visit feedingamerica.org. That's feedingamerica.org. Together we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. A message from Feeding America and the Ad Council.